In today's video, we're gonna be covering what are closing costs when you buy your new house, when you have to pay them, and exactly what they are. So let's get started. Welcome to the Tim Lamb Mortgage Channel where everything is about you, the new home buyer. If we're meeting for the very first time, my name is Tim Lamb. I've been a mortgage professional for the last 18 years and my passion revolves around educating home buyers so they have the confidence to go out and buy their very first home. Please consider subscribing to the channel here so that way you get all the education that you need. All right, question of the day. What is the number one question that you would like to ask me that you are nervous about asking a mortgage professional? I know it's a unique situation not knowing anything about what you're doing, but yet it's the biggest purchase you've ever made. So I'm sure you're nervous about a couple questions. So put those in the comments down below and I will make sure that they get answered. Today's topic is closing costs. What are they and when do I need to pay them? So first of all, I tell everyone that closing costs fall into one of four buckets. Here are the buckets. We have to pay discount points or origination fees, which would be bucket number one. Bucket number two is what I refer to as your fixed expenses, the items that you need to do in order to get that mortgage into your name and that house into your name. Bucket number three is your prepaid expenses. And then bucket number four is any inspections that you may choose to do in the transaction. So recapping here, discount points or origination points, fixed closing costs, prepaid expenses, and the inspections that you may choose to do before buying your new home. All right, let's dive into those four buckets of closing costs. Let's start with the very first one, discount points or origination points, all right? First of all, this is not something that you have to pay, but it's definitely something you should ask your loan professional about because paying upfront points typically gets you a better interest rate, all right? If you pay one discount point, that would equate to 1% of your mortgage balance. So let's assume you're borrowing $250,000, one discount point, one origination point, would be $2,500. Typically, this will get you a lower interest rate, all right? So, you could consider paying some money up front to buy down the interest rates, and that lower interest rate is what you would have for the entire life of your loan. So, discount points, origination points are an optional thing to consider, but it's a great conversation to have with your loan officer. All right, bucket number two of your closing costs are what I refer to as the fixed expenses, all right? So example of some of the fixed expenses would be your appraisal, your credit report, the flood determination, the title work, the recording, the underwriting, processing, approval, closing of your mortgage, all of the things that need to be done to protect you as the home buyer to protect us as the lender, as well as get it transferred from the seller's name into your name. So the fixed expenses are things that need to be done to get you a mortgage. So that is bucket number two, your fixed expenses. All right, here we go. Bucket number three, when it comes to your closing costs are what is referred to in our industry as prepaid expenses. Costs that you need to pay to get things started essentially. So there are kind of four things that fall into this category. Number one, you need to pay your first year of homeowner's insurance at closing, all right? What we'll do is we'll go ahead and work with your insurance agent. You'll get an insurance premium all put together, but what we'll do at closing is we'll collect that very first year of homeowner's insurance premium at closing, and then we'll mail that check off to your homeowner's insurance agent. The second thing that falls under the prepaid expenses is establishing your escrow account, all right? So if you need more clarification on the escrow account, click on this video right here. I've done a huge breakdown of what an escrow account is and how it works, all right? So part of the prepaid expenses here, part of your closing costs, are establishing that escrow account, all right? So there's probably a couple months of homeowner's insurance, 
a few months of property taxes and maybe a month or two of the private mortgage insurance that we would start your escrow account with. All right. The reason that we do this is we want to make sure you have enough money in your escrow account when the bills come due. So the prepaid expense when it comes to your escrow account is going to be a variable expense based on your closing date. And the third item falls into the prepaid expense bucket is your daily interest. All right. So think about daily interest as whatever the day of the month that you close in, you've got to pay interest per day through the end of the month. So that way your mortgage payments always come due on the first of the month. All right. So as an example, if you closed on the 25th of the month, you would pay five or six days worth of interest to get your payments set to be collected on the first of the month. So recapping those prepaid expenses, it's your first year of homeowner's insurance. It's establishing your escrow account to cover the taxes and the insurance and possibly the PMI. And the third one is the prepaid expenses for you. All right, that covers bucket number three. All right, bucket number four when it comes to closing costs. All right, these are completely optional expenses, but are hugely important as a home buyer. All right, they are the inspections that you may choose to do to protect yourself in the home buying transaction. All right, so some of the items that you potentially could do would be a whole home inspection where you would hire an inspector and they would start at the roof, work their way all the way through the house and get you to the foundation. They're going to provide you a giant report and go through that report with you and tell you what's working and what's not. I tell everyone to think of the home inspection as kind of the nuts and bolts of what's working and what's not working in your house. You can also choose to do a termite inspection to see if there's any wood destroying insects that are uh, eating away your house. You can choose to do a radon inspection that checks out the lower level gases to see if there's any gases that are seeping into your home. You could do a well test. You could do a septic test. There is a variety of inspections that you can choose to do to protect yourself as the home buyer. So the fourth bucket is the inspections to figure out exactly what's working and what's not working in your home. And again, these are not required, but definitely highly recommended. So that is bucket number four of your closing costs. All right, we've covered the four buckets of closing costs. Now, when are those costs due as part of the home buying journey? All right, most if not all of these expenses are going to be collected at closing. All right. There's a couple things that I want to point out that are exceptions, though. And most lenders are going to collect what they call an application deposit. They're going to collect that from you once the financing is officially started and you've signed your intent to proceed forward with them as the lender. That credit or that deposit essentially is collected up front and then credited to you the day of closing. Think of it similar to kind of like your earnest money. All right. Some of the inspections, again, if you choose to do those, the inspector may want to be paid the day that that inspection is completed. So essentially, most of the closing costs are collected the day of closing outside of an application deposit potentially with your lender and or some of the inspections. So wrapping up this video, there's four buckets of closing costs, discount points or origination fees, which is optional, but it may get you a better interest rate. The fixed expenses, appraisal, title, credit, those prepaid expenses, your starting up of your escrow account, that first year of homeowner's insurance, and then again, those optional expenses for inspections that you may choose to do. I know that you have questions. There's a lot to digest in this video. So put the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer those for us. And also make sure that you check out this video here. These are the 12 steps to buying your first home. Thank you so much and happy house hunting. Thank you.